Welcome to our lesson on inherited diseases and sex determination. The key questions for this lesson are What are some inherited disorders? How are some disorders inherited? What are the characteristics of some inherited disorders? What is embryo screening? How is sex inherited? The key words that you will need to know are dominant, recessive, ethical, ratio, proportion. We already know that all of our genetic characteristics are inherited from our parents. This can include genetic disorders. You will need to know about some specific genetic disorders, but you could be given information about any other and asked to apply what you know. First, we will look at an inherited disorder called polydactyly. This disorder can vary in severity and leads to extra digits. This can range from small growths on the hands and feet to whole extra fingers and toes. Polydactyly is caused by a dominant allele. This means that only one allele for polydactyly would need to be inherited for the individual to have the disorder. A person who has polydactyly could have the genotype capital P lowercase p or capital P capital P, with the capital P denoting the dominant allele for polydactyly and the lowercase p the recessive allele for not having polydactyly. Only one capital letter P allele is needed for a person to have polydactyly. A person without polydactyly would have the genotype lowercase p, lowercase p, two recessive alleles. Task. If a person with polydactyly with the genotype capital P, lowercase p, has a child with someone without polydactyly, what is the probability of their child having polydactyly? A Punnett square should be drawn to determine the possible offspring genotypes. Then those with polydactyly should be identified and the probability calculated. Out of the four, two have the genotype capital P, lowercase p, in which the polydactyly allele is present. So the probability is 2 over 4 multiplied by 100 to give a percentage of 50%. Extension if a person with polydactyly with a homozygous genotype has a baby with someone who does not have polydactyly, what is the probability of the offspring having polydactyly? We could draw a Punnett square to work out the answer again. But if one parent is homozygous for polydactyly, that means they have two dominant alleles for polydactyly. So they would always pass on that allele. Therefore, there is 100% chance of their offspring having polydactyly. We can see from the Punnett square that all of the offspring genotypes are capital P, lowercase p, so contain the dominant polydactyly allele, so all offspring would have polydactyly. The next genetic disorder that we will look at is cystic fibrosis. This is caused by a recessive allele, meaning that it must be inherited from both parents. As cystic fibrosis is caused by a recessive allele, if a person is heterozygous, they will not have the disorder but could unknowingly carry it. Task. Given that cystic fibrosis is caused by a recessive allele, what is the genotype of a person with cystic fibrosis? A person who has cystic fibrosis would have two recessive alleles, so would be homozygous for the cystic fibrosis allele. This could be shown by lowercase letters CC. Extension. A carrier and a person with cystic fibrosis have a child. What is the probability that the child will have cystic fibrosis? A Punnett square could be used to answer this question. The person who is the carrier would have one recessive cystic fibrosis allele and one allele for not having cystic fibrosis, which would be dominant. Their genotype would be capital C, lowercase c. The person with cystic fibrosis would have the genotype lowercase c, lowercase c. 
The Punnett square shows that two out of four of the offspring would have cystic fibrosis with the genotype lowercase c, lowercase c, and two out of four would carry cystic fibrosis with the genotype capital C, lowercase c. This means that they would not have cystic fibrosis, but they could pass it on to their offspring. Two out of four gives the probability of the child having cystic fibrosis of 50%. Cystic fibrosis is a severe and life-limiting condition. It causes thick, sticky mucus to build up in the lungs and the digestive system. This means that people with cystic fibrosis sometimes do not grow as well as their healthy counterparts, as they do not absorb as much nutrition from their food and cannot exercise as they do not transfer oxygen efficiently. Although there are treatments available, they cannot cure cystic fibrosis. It is because of this parents may choose to undergo embryo screening when they become pregnant. This procedure is done during early pregnancy and poses a small risk to the unborn baby. However, it can tell the parents if the baby will be born with a specific genetic condition. This can be helpful as it can allow parents to prepare for any additional needs that the child may have. Or they can choose to ask for a termination of the pregnancy. People have differing opinions about the pros and cons of embryo screening. Task. What do you think are some reasons for and against embryo screening? Embryo screening can give parents information that allows them to make informed choices about if they wish to terminate the pregnancy or not. There are different issues that may inform these choices – ethical issues that are to do with right and wrong or fairness. An ethical view could be that it is wrong to put the unborn baby at risk by carrying out the screening procedure, or it is wrong to choose to terminate a pregnancy as the unborn baby has a right to life regardless of any conditions. There are social issues to consider. These are issues that relate to other people and society. Social issues to consider may be whether a family that has other children could cope with the additional needs of a child with a genetic disorder, if it is fair on the other children, and who would carry out the care required. Economic considerations relate to money and finances. These could be considering the costs of hospital treatments or medicines for the child, as well as money to support the parents to look after the child. Embryo screening can also be carried out during IVF treatment. During IVF, many embryos can be produced and then through screening, the most viable embryo without genetic disorders is implanted in the woman's uterus, possibly resulting in a pregnancy. The screening would be used to identify the most viable embryo. The other embryos may be used in scientific research or destroyed. Task. Answer this AQA exam question. Mr and Mrs Smith decided to visit a genetic counsellor who discussed embryo screening. Read the information which they received from the genetic counsellor. Five eggs will be removed from Mrs Smith's ovary while she is under an anaesthetic. The eggs will be fertilised in a dish using Mr Smith's sperm cells. The embryos will be grown in the dish until each embryo has about 30 cells. One cell will be removed from each embryo and tested for cystic fibrosis. A suitable embryo will be placed into Mrs Smith's uterus and she may become pregnant. Any unsuitable embryos will be destroyed. A. Suggest why it is helpful to take five eggs from the ovary and not just one egg. B. Evaluate the use of embryo screening in this case. Remember to give a conclusion to your evaluation. Answers A. More than one is taken to give a greater chance of healthy embryo without cystic fibrosis. B. Advantages Any two from Ignore references to abortion unless qualified by later screening. Greater Certain chance of having child, embryo, without cystic fibrosis, healthy. 
child with cystic fibrosis difficult, expensive to bring up. Cystic fibrosis, gene, allele, not passed on to future generations. Disadvantages, any two from operation dangers, named e.g. infection, ignore risk unqualified, ethical or religious issues linked with killing embryos, accept wrong or cruel to embryos, accept right to life argument, ignore embryos are destroyed. High cost of procedure, possible damage to embryo during testing for cystic fibrosis operation. Conclusion, it is right because the child will probably not have cystic fibrosis, even though it is expensive. Or, it is wrong because embryos are killed despite a greater chance of having a healthy baby. The sex of a person is determined by the chromosomes that they inherit from their parents. Females inherit XX chromosomes and males XY. When an egg is fertilised by a sperm during sexual reproduction, the two cells join. All egg cells contain X chromosomes and sperm contain X and Y chromosomes. So it is the sperm that determines the sex of the baby that results. This can be shown using a Punnett square. A female has the genotype XX and a male the genotype XY. The Punnett square shows that there is a 50% chance of a boy or girl, as two out of the four offspring genotypes are XX, or a girl, and two out of the four are XY, or a boy. Task. The diagram below shows the inheritance of X and Y chromosomes. Draw a tick on the part of the diagram that shows a sperm cell. The X or Y from parent 1 both show sperm cells. Extension. What is the probability of having a female child? The probability of having a female child is 2 out of 4 or 50%.